Hello and welcome to another video mini-series within the uh, Python Stocks and Mathematics uh, tutorial video series. This mini-series uh, is going to be concerning the Shande Momentum Oscillator. So the Shande Momentum Oscillator, uh, it's mainly used for finding overbought and oversold situations. Now it's going to be a little bit different from your RSI. Obviously, overbought and oversold, immediately we think of RSI. The CMO defers because uh, what it does is it actually looks at the, 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 the force, the push in each direction. It looks at that push individually, so upward pushes and downward pushes. Generally, uh, signals from the uh, CMO here, we've got if it's greater than 50, it's considered possibly overbought, and if it's less than negative 50, then it's oversold. So, and obviously it fluctuates over the zero line, and crossover over the zero line suggests um, um, obviously buy and sell points. Usually uh, the shiny momentum oscillator is going to be just one single line uh, but a lot of people will also plot up the simple moving average of that CMO line and then you can kind of treat, um, treat it as like a signal, right? So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is show you guys an example uh, both of just this, the single line and then also of the, uh, the simple moving average line as well. And actually, I guess before that, uh, let me show you guys the uh, calculation. So the calculation of the Shandy Momentum Oscillator is going to be the following here. Uh, although I will just say SOU equals the sum of up movements, and then SOD is the sum of down movements. So the CMO is going to say, what is the sum of all the up movements minus the sum of all the down movements? Divide that by the sum of all up movements plus the sum of all down movements, and then multiply whatever that fraction is times 100. Now, movements, right, is kind of inherently just kind of means and brings along with it that there's some sort of time frame. Usually, uh, people are going to use a time frame of 10. So they're going to consider the last, you know, 10, 10 open, high, low, close prices looking at, um, and actually in our, in our scenario, we use just close prices. So usually whenever there's like a single line and a single bit of data, people just use the close price. So, sorry, I misspoke. Um, so close prices, so a time frame of like the last 10 close prices, and then from price number one to number two, did we go up or did we go down? And if we went up, that would be an up movement. How much of an up movement was that? And so on, you continue adding them. So now let me show you guys uh, some of the examples from the CMO. So this is that charting application that we made. Uh, there's a whole series dedicated to this charting application. If you want to know exactly how to make this charting application, what we're going to be uh, talking about in this video and this entire series is really all about uh, each indicator since there are just tons of these indicators. So this is the bottom one right here is our CMO. And so at the 50 mark, we drew a red line just to kind of denote, hey, this would be an over, over, uh, overbought scenario possibly. And then we drew a green line at the negative 50 mark uh, to denote, hey, this is quite possibly oversold. Now, um, it just so happens that we just left this top uh, indicator slot uh, in its natural state which was an RSI which is what we used. We used RSI up here and MACD down here so it just kind of worked out that we're, uh, we do have an RSI to compare to but as you can see uh, it follows the RSI line pretty similarly. I mean there's some stuff where you know like the peak, the mountainous peak over here is a little different than this mountainous peak you know but as far as directional movement they are very similar but their traje trajectory does differ uh, quite often, so it's it's kind of interesting to compare the two, where um, you know they either they move up and down at similar times, but how much they move up and down uh, differs quite a bit. Um, so anyway, uh, this is an example with just the line. But now what we can do is we can also let me get out of this, and the other thing that we can do is plot it up with a simple moving average. So let me go ahead and uh, make that change for us. And now when we plot the same Apple stock again, let's say, bring it over. Now you can see that we have the, uh, the simple moving average line is this like cyan line. So each time there's a crossover, it's a warning, right? So as the CMO crosses over our simple moving average, it's kind of like a, that would be seen as kind of a warning, like maybe get out. 
Um, and then same thing as we continue on, um, you know, you can see also when it crosses uh, up words, you know, that, okay, well, maybe this would be a time to, to get into the stock. And then obviously here you would be thinking about getting out, but probably not really until like this point here, you know. Um, but anyway, Apple just kept going up anyways. <laughs> so uh, this is our CMO indicator. Uh, that's kind of the idea of it. So in the next video, what we're going to be doing is calculating this within Python. And in the video after that, we'll actually be charting it in matplotlib. So anyway, stay tuned for those videos. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for the support and the subscriptions. And until next time.